Hey everybody, Jerry J here. Welcome to the channel. Hope everybody's having a great day so far. It is Saturday, so of course we're checking out the XFM, the Ricky Gervais Show with Stephen Merchant. Uh, this is Series 0, Episode 5, entitled, mm, entitled Tape 2, Side A. We're going to jump straight into this, but first we're going to hit the like and subscribe buttons on the original video. <clears throat> Excuse me. Damn, that is the important part. Uh, everything will be linked in the description, as always. So you can go check out or check that out. Leave a like and a comment over there if you wish. Um, that being said, let's jump into this and see what the guys are up to this week. It's just gone five past four. It's Ricky Gervais show. That Steve just doing the microphone, putting his headphones on. Making Sorry, Rick, I'm not. <coughs> Sorry, yeah. I just didn't give me much time to prepare myself. So no, hang on. a week. Yeah. It was actually a week. Um, I think right. that's working. My headphones are not quite working, are they? No. It's going right, though. Well, not only we haven't not yeah. prepared for the show. <laughs> yeah, okay. <clears throat> I thought maybe people could phone in and give us some subjects to uh, uh, talk about. 0171 580 2000. Yeah. Or they can fax in. I can only imagine. Five zero oh, one two three four, and they could get like a discussion going. Like, what do you think of that Tour de France nonsense? And we could sort of, that, no, not that. Um, what do you think about? Uh, well, you know, it's their idea, isn't it? Oh one seven one five eight oh. That okay? I thought it was my headphones. No, it's the video itself. It, the sounds a little bit fuzzy. Two thousand. Quickly, I mean, really, seriously, just get on the phone now. <laughs> <laughs> this is my record of the week. <sighs> yeah, go on. Yeah. yeah, what is it, exciting? Yeah, it's Foo Fighters, right, yeah. walking after you. I'm oh, looking forward to it. It's quite interesting. I think it's quite interesting, Rick, because, um, you know, it's a very sensitive song, very beautiful song, and I think it betrays something about you, about the inner Ricky. Yeah. Which I don't think uh, we've ever sort of really tapped into before. No, but, I mean, I've got something exciting for you as well. Really? Because maybe you, you know, you can find love too, because Petru sent in... Uh, a piece of paper here from, uh, see there, from Mix Mag. Yeah. But it's the, uh, personal ads. Oh, no, it's not. It's an ad. It's select. That's an ad advert. Whatever, Rick. It doesn't really matter, does it? Realism, it, it makes all the difference. No. Move so on. I don't think I'm just making it up. Come on. Right. Lonely, depressed, bi girl <laughs> needs someone of any age to understand. Right? Any age. Right. Yeah. Well, that fits, you know, you're any age. <laughs> yeah. Ugly freaks preferred. Yeah. Right? Anyone accepted. <laughs> well, I'm in there. <coughs> well, no, mm, I, don't, don't, me. don't count your chickens. Me. Don't count your chickens. <laughs> Confidentiality and honesty assured. That's fine. Reply guaranteed. Give it to me now. Now, I know what you're thinking. No, she no, said, give it to me now. I know what she said. I know, I know why you're thinking. You, it's just any age which you fall into nicely. <laughs> yep. Um, ugly freaks preferred. So you're at the top of the list. And anyone accepted. See, I, but I don't think she realises quite what you look like, because you're not in her <laughs> framework. Do you know what I mean? So I, I still think you might be disappointed. No, I, no. Gervais, this will work. This will work. Let's see this. That's Ada. Let me depress mm. bi girl on it. What, what does that mean, though? Bi girl. What is that? Bisexual. Bisexual? Yeah. Again, I think she means... Bisexual? Se sexuality of any human. Do you know what I mean? Well, like, all I'm saying, bisexual Gervais. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? What, what, a, no, what do you mean? <laughs> a, three. Yeah, A, three people. What? Three in a bed. You, a bisexual, and an amphibian. Three in a bed, Rick. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> a? But you won't be one of them. It's not going to happen, is it? No. <laughs> 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 it's messed up, but you won't be one of them. <laughs> He's talking about a threesome, but there's no guarantee it'd be another girl. <laughs> He's just thinking that way. Uh, yeah, there's no guarantees. Anyway. Hey. <laughs> hey! But you won't be one of them. It's not going to happen, is it? No. It's really so. I know we haven't got much in the show today. We've not yeah. really thought of anything to talk about. Why do you just give a time check, then? <laughs> just to fill it up. I know, exactly. Yeah. 
But like, why? Do you know what I mean? Because the music, out the well, music was playing, right? And yeah. you mentioned it's twenty-five past four. Um, we'd never do time checks. <laughs> How is that useful? Uh, uh, why yeah. are you expecting someone's <laughs> looking at? They're going to think twenty-five past four. Christ, Whoa. I should be at my mum's house. I and haven't so played any good records. I can't really interest him, but. Thank God he told me what it was. I've got to take that bun out of the oven. Well, exactly. You, know, you never what, know. Yeah, yeah. But you don't want to tell Or they probably just realised some good style. <laughs> well, exactly. I thought I was going to say, <laughs> don't say it's 25 past four, because who knows? I don't know. Maybe the Antiques Roadshow. No, B BBC always start things at 25 past, don't they? Yeah. And five two. Well, you're a fool. That's what I'm saying. There's no reason for that. Why do they do that? Why, why do they do that? And not on the hour like ITV. You know where you are with ITV. BBC, ten past, quarter past. Yeah. 0171, five eight eight. Right. 2000. Yeah. Why the uh, BBC? I'm struggling. You are indeed. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, quickly go to an ad break, which is good. Yeah. That that keeps people pretty fixed. Oh, yeah, yeah. They'll be desperate. Yeah. They'll be listening to the... But I'll do a little trial. Watch this. Uh, but <laughs> after that, if you can now hold out for 40 seconds, <laughs> we've got the new one from the Manic Street Preachers. You've got to be happy with that. I'm loving it. Gervais, before we do it... Go on. Um, I watched Team Knight Rider yesterday. You did. You've seen it. It's no. a new, it's new sort of thing. It must be made ten years later. And it's uh, instead of just a one Knight Rider car, it's a team of them. A fleet of them, Gervais. Team. Uh, it's, okay. I think it's a team. No, team. Team Knight Rider. <laughs> yeah, when what, he was like... little. <laughs> I thought he said teen. <laughs> yeah, when he was little. Gervais. Team. Oh, I, I think it's a team. <laughs> no, team. Team Knight Rider. <laughs> yeah, when what, he was like... little. He had spots and he was a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> On like a little, uh, little <laughs> yeah, scooter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and you go to the girls and go, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to, uh, do you want to, uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> team yeah. Knight Rider. Team Knight Rider would be beautiful. That's a great, isn't it? Yeah. That'd be great. And Kit goes, what are you doing? Nothing. Yeah. I was just, no, no, I was, I got him, we caught him, the flies. <laughs> <laughs> Get these like uh, kits there, sort of explaining how to uh, shave. Yeah, yeah. That'd be beautiful. You dirty little. Now that has really gummed up my CD player now. <laughs> I'll just stop it there, oh, shall we? Team oh, Night Rider. God. Team Night Rider. I'll tell you, if we get on to talking about telly programs, Gervais, we'll be here all night. Yeah. Won't we? Yeah, well, it's about 25 past four now. That's brilliant. <laughs> They're yeah. disappointed. Um, but listen, Gervais, you know I've always said. <laughs> You're eight up. A special teen night rider. Oh my gosh. I I never heard of a team night rider. Of course I quit watching that show back when it was on originally. Uh, night Rider was kinda stupid. It was yeah. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say kinda stupid. I would say mostly stupid. But yeah, it's just one of the those shows that was on back then. There was that one. There was a uh, what was the other one? Um, if anybody remembers it, Manimal, about the guy that could transform into any animal. That one was another one that was stupid. Back in the seventies and eighties. Uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Let's get back into this. Get on to talking about telly programs, Gervais. We'll be here all night. Yeah. Won't we? Yeah, well, it's about 25 past four now. That's brilliant. <laughs> They're yeah. disappointed. Um, mm. But listen, Gervais, you know I've always said that um, you know when a party's going bad. Yeah. When you end up in the kitchen uh, talking about old kids' TV shows. And singing the theme tunes. Exactly. And do you remember Swizzlers? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And Flying Saucers, yes. We remember and Flying Saucers. And Batwing Jumpers. <laughs> and everyone starts laughing. Obviously. Batwing Fair Jumpers. Too. Do you remember Batwing Jumpers? She's retired now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, oh, Grot Bags. Hey. <gasps> grot Bags? That grot was, bags. What was that? That uh, was the Emu. Pink windmill. Oh, yeah, yeah. Talk about gay subtext, pink windmill. <laughs> so I take okay. it the fact that we're talking about it. We are in the kitchen exactly. at a bad party. We're in the kitchen we've at a bad party. We've got nothing, have we? We've got nothing to talk about. You know, usually we say, oh, we've got nothing, we've got a couple of things and we get out. We've really got nothing, Absolutely have we? nothing. What about that Team Night Rider? We were going somewhere. Oh, there, there Team Night Rider. Yeah. Hilarious. Imagine it. What was it? <laughs> Michael, it's time for school. Oh, come on, I've got bellyache. Well, you're well enough to do that. <laughs> I have to do that. I have to get rid of my poison. Um, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, no, but team, I wasn't talking. <laughs> <laughs> You're well enough to do that. We know what he's talking about. <laughs> Taking care of the 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 morning problem. <laughs> 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 um, 
<laughs> well, uh, yeah, no, but Especially team, with team I wasn't boys. talking about team night. No, night sorry, team night. Ride. You actually, you actually going to tell an anecdote there? Well, no, not really. All I was going to say was that there, it was great yesterday because there was team night rider, which is the you're sort of t ten years later. There's a team of uh, people with super electronic cars driving around solving crimes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then I flipped over, and there was Butt Rogers in the 25th century, uh, <laughs> featuring uh, Gil Gerard. Do you remember him? Good looking fella. Yeah. And Twinkie or a bit bitty bitty bitty. And um, <laughs> sorry, are, you, uh, are you on crack? <laughs> no. no so have you have you taken sort of like some real sort of heavy mixture of cocaine? What? And just, uh, uh, what's that? <laughs> and uh, good looking fella, bitty bitty. And uh, nee, me, nee, me, nee, me, nee. No, that's Twinkie. And then I turned. What? That's why? You... <laughs> it was a little. There was supposed to be a robot, but who knows if it was or not? Uh, I remember Buck Rogers. That was an old. That was another old old show. Uh, back when I was growing up, it's like, man, he's getting some old ones. Biddy biddy, and me 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 me. But that was the sound he always made. What the why? What's the impression of Twinkie, the little robot? The robot, the little, oh, the little robot. Ah, wait, with the little silver robot that went biddy biddy biddy. It's as simple as that. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to corrupt you. I'm not trying to get you know confused. I'll go on. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I'll take All I'm answer. saying is, great TV shows there that we forget. You know, we're in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, we are, we're yeah. in the kitchen. But everyone else has left. It's just us two. <laughs> it's just we could I. go home. <laughs> we could go home. But yeah. so we're still enjoying it. Yeah, in the kitchen there. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. but what I was going to talk about is you know, there's a lot of TV shows. <laughs> there's a lot of TV shows, Gervais, that we 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 lo know and love and we remember. Yeah. But a lot of films, right, that became TV shows, MASH, obviously the big success. Do yeah. you know, Gervais, I read about this yesterday, fantastic. Do you know that um, they made a TV show, right, in the 1982 of Casablanca, <laughs> right, <laughs> featuring <laughs> David Soul. <laughs> <laughs> as what, Rick? As Rick. <laughs> what a fantastic TV oh, okay. show. That is fantastic. It'd be, it'd be Casablanca and you have a picture Don't of him with you. And every week they'd find a different reason for him to say, play it again, Sam. And lovely, and, uh, yeah, and lovely Patty Coombs. As, uh, no. as, uh, as he's uh, on. Liza, I mean. Oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Mr. Rick, I'm not playing Black Backgammon for money. <laughs> play it again, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Every week, whatever it be, I don't know what they're different contrivances. It's like a catchphrase. Oh, that'd be fantastic, Great, wouldn't it? Bobby Crush as the bloke <laughs> on the piano. <laughs> ding, ding, you ding, must ding, remember ding. this. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Every week he gets an excuse to play it. Oh, that is Yang, dang, da, dang, da, dang. Well, once right, dang, I was dang. looking through, right, and there was that TV show called "You Must Be the Husband," oh. right. Yeah, it was it was called You Must Be the Husband, and I'd never seen it before. And me and Joe watching it, it was just flicked over. We saw the last that we were going to watch something else, and it just. Is there some like uh you might be the father on Maury <laughs> on a Maury Povic show? <laughs> you must be the husband. <laughs> and I'd never seen it before and me and Joe watching it, it was just flicked over, we saw the last that we were gonna watch something else and it just ended with the waiter coming up to one of them going, Uh, you must be the husband and we thought, Do they have to end with that <laughs> every single week? <laughs> Deary me, that's that's like a hard work. I think. <laughs> yeah. Putting catchphrases <laughs> yeah. in, in the TV shows. Hard work. <laughs> David Soul. David Soul. Okay. Oh, that is fantastic. Dave Hutch. Oh, who played Lit Victor Laszlo? I don't know anything Someone else about it. If anyone's ever seen it, please give me a call. What a fantastic show that would be. Oh, I know who played uh, Victor Laszlo. Um, what's his name? Rodney. What's his name? Nicholas Lindhurst. Nicholas Lindhurst. He'd be great, wouldn't he? Nick Berry. Nick Berry. That'd be beautiful. Oh. And I'll, I'll tell you what it would be. It would be, uh, they'd be on a golf course. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and... They're going way back, back before my memory. <laughs> anyway, uh, my memory doesn't, my memory doesn't stretch that far anymore. Uh, so a lot of these names they're talking about, I don't recognize. Uh, a few of them I do, but some of them, I, most of them I don't. Because, like I said, my memory doesn't go back that far anymore. My memory barely stretches back the last couple of weeks. Sometimes. That'd be beautiful. Oh. And I'll, I'll tell you what it would be. It would be, uh, they'd be on a golf course. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, Sam would, like, miss a stroke, wouldn't he? <laughs> and they'd just go, oh, play it again, Sam. <laughs> and everyone else would laugh. It'd be beautiful. Oh, baby bird, if you'll be mine. We can keep this cup forever now. Yeah. We're in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. To make a cup of tea. Yeah. Um, apparently, Steve... Um, who says this? 
Uh, he doesn't say play it again, Sam. No, I know he, he doesn't. He says, you... go on, play it, Sam. I know that, you stupid toss. Oh, for goodness sake, I studied film for three <laughs> years, for Christ's sake, Jervais. <laughs> of course I know that, but it's the TV show. They're bound to have made <laughs> the same mistake, aren't they? You, of course that. You can do an academic subject, of then. Of course. Oh, I can't, well, I'm sickened. <laughs> I'm, I'm sickened. Because everybody knows that, Gervais, and yet he's come out and he's spouted rubbish. Oh, I'm just, oh. Um, he thinks it's a good show. <laughs> oh, God, I'm disappointed. Oh, he, he, I'm so he, likes, angry. he likes the show. I'm so angry, because everybody thinks I'm an imbecile. Yeah. <laughs> well, fair enough. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, because I was going to mention fair a enough. couple because I came up with a couple of my own TV shows. Go on, yes, I've got a few. Have you come up with your own? Yeah. Have you talked about this in the past? Well, yeah, I... yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, like the, um, when they have a cliche in the title and that's the title. Oh, that's the best one we come up with. Like a fantastic. touch of frost and it's his name. I know, I it's love that. it. Yeah. But my favourite, this um, is the one I came up with, right? It was called Lady of the Night. <laughs> right? But that's knight spelt K-N-I-G-H-T, right? Yeah. And what is clever about it is, or the, what it is, is there's a knight, right, a knight of the realm, okay, but it's set about sort of uh, 1870 or something, sort of Sherlock Holmes era, that sort of thing, and uh, he's a knight of the realm, you know, Lord, uh, was it Sir, Sir Johnson or whatever, and uh, he's, a, he's a knight, whatever, but he doubles up as a private investigator, oh, right? yeah. okay. and he's got, working for him, a prostitute, yeah. right, who's also a private investigator, Yeah. Uh, and it's called Lady of the Night, you see, and it's a double, it's double meaning. Because, it's clever, Because she's a lady of, of the, the night, night, and she's he's, a lady of the called night. night. <laughs> it's a night. It's fantastic. Brilliant. And they go around, but seriously, they go around investigating, <laughs> like, crimes, sort of Whitechapel and stuff. Makes and, sense. Um, and it's brilliant because, uh, you know, obviously she's a prostitute or whatever, and he's a knight, and there's a bit of sexual tension, Gervais, obviously, yeah. and obviously got all the Victorian elements and everything, and obviously they can't associate with one another openly in the streets, because that would be, you know, he's obviously got to maintain a certain reputation. Yeah. So it's Lady of the Night, and there's all the intrigue and tension. What do you think about you that? You thought this through. I thought that through. That is fantastic, using all your, your technical knowledge yeah. and your film study and your... Yeah. I came up with one. Go on. Starring naughty Samantha Janus as a nun with Diana Rigg as a mother superior and it's called None the Wiser. That's beautiful. And they're naughty. And, <laughs> and the, um, and the sequel, the she gets pregnant and she's, she has to go and work in the kitchen, right? And that's called uh, None in the Oven. <laughs> I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Of course it is. <laughs> yeah. Of course it is. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> no, Do you remember um, Ray Cooney, <laughs> that, that thing in the 80s when all those... Uh, had those farces on, and uh, basically what he did was um, substitute the word life for wife. He had <laughs> run for your wife, <laughs> right? yeah. and uh, wife begins at 40. Beautiful. Doesn't make any sense, does it, no. grammatically? No. I, I just thought of one, like, um, I sort of said to uh, Claire a few weeks ago that it would be like a stage play, and there'd be loads of people jumping in and out, like, of hospital beds, but one in one of the beds, the one of the wives, she just wanted to die. Because had no quality, and it's whose wife is it anyway? <laughs> That'd be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> whose wife is it anyway? Okay. I get it. Wives, she just wanted to die. Because had no quality, and it's whose wife is it anyway? <laughs> that'd be good, wouldn't it? That's nice. Yeah, yeah. Brian Rick. Oh, that'd be beautiful. That'd I be love lovely. that. Touch of frost. It's so clever. And the, and the yeah. other one is, um... Uh, loads of, uh, lawyers with their wives jumping in and out of bed with just underpants on taking drugs and it's this wife. That's beautiful. Yeah? That's great. That's a nice touch. So, um, let's have, uh, some competitions then. But you know, I've got, I've, I've got a whole game show as well which oh, I can mention. God. Go on. Do you want me to mention it? Well, we, we, should we, uh, play, uh, Blue Oyster Cult? Their yeah. classic song, Can I Don't say, Fear the Reaper. I, I've got a game show, right, that I come up with. That yeah. was a classic song. And it features song. me, but I think it could be perhaps a vehicle for yourself, Gervais. Yeah. What's All it right? called? I'm going to tell you, like, it's called, basically, it's called Ricky Gervais Meat Rations. Right. And uh, I, I like it already. You like it already? Because there's a part in there for me. Yeah. Could I play the, the Ricky Gervais? Yes. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. It was originally called, um, it was originally called, uh, basically, let me just summarise very briefly. I'm not going to tell you all the games, but there is, it's basically recreating the uh, heady days of the war. Right. Um, right. That's fantastic. It's beautiful already, isn't it? It's I've got the got, nostalgia thing. I've got a game as well. But it's called, it was originally going to be called uh, Ricky Gervais Fag Rations. Right. But apparently cigarettes weren't rationed in the war. So right it's then? called Meat Rations now. Excellent. And uh, I'll tell you some great games. My favourite is, um, oh no, what's it called? Um, to, to be perfectly Anne Frank. <laughs> it's a great game. It really is a great game. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> it's just... Oh, that's wrong on so many levels. <laughs> It'd be perfectly Anne Frank. <laughs> you gonna be perfectly silent? <laughs> Anne Frank. <laughs> it's a great game. It really is a great game where uh, you've got to pretend to be Anne Frank and hide from uh, sort of snooping Nazis. Oh, that is fantastic. It's a great game. And there's also, of course, well, let me go into it. There's, there's also um, uh, uh, Dig for Granny. 
Okay. Uh, well, I'm digging for victory, if you like. <laughs> and what happens, you, you're, you're scavenging through rubble, right? Can I just say, and these, are, find... these are copyright. Anyone trying to rip me off? I mean, I've got the penis puppet theatre. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've got a snake in this, surely, Oh, certainly. I? Ricky you Gervais, Nick Rations. You can have a bit of my penis puppet theatre. That's lovely. Yeah? And I've also got a new game that I'll talk about after, after yours. It's called Tip the Balance. And it's sort of like a game for four. And it comes, it's like, I'll, I'll send it off to Waddington, see what you think. I mean, there's, there's, there's teething problems with okay. it. Well, listen, but, Gervais, look, let's hold play that Don't Fear the Reaper. Let's play that tune. By Blue Oyster and his cult. It's a classic. Yeah. And then we come back and we try and make some money. Let's make some cash. Well, you've got to be happy with that. Blue Oyster cult, Don't Fear the Reaper. Yeah. Yeah. So, go on then. So, what other games are in this, yeah. uh... Uh, Ricky Gervais's meat rations. Well, it starts off, uh, there's the sound of an air raid siren. Oh. Yeah, I like it already. And uh, we came up with, uh, start queuing up, Mum, for Ricky Gervais meat rations. Excellent. Do I look like sort of walker out of Dad's army? Yes. Ah, uh, oh, that is fantastic. Now you I, come in. Yeah. And, um, what it is, the set, right, is, um, is kind of like, half of it is an old sort of East End pub, and yeah. the rest is kind of rubble <laughs> and debris, oh, and a, sky a skyline of ruined, mm. you know, um, oh. Britain. And what it is, is, uh, you, you come in, you're fairly sort of sharp and dapper, and, uh, of course, Chaz and Dave provide the music throughout the show. And, and, ding -a -ding -ding -a -ding -a -ding. and you know the Dolly Bird that usually comes on? She's a woman with, like, uh, um, curlers with a little, um, scarf on it. That's right. She comes out with like, those little floral... That's aprons. It. You've got it. You've got oh, it. Oh, fantastic. And so there's a game show, there's a bit, there's a bit in the show called Roll Out the Barrel. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what happens in that. Yeah. Roll Out the Barrel. If you don't know what happens in that, then how do you come up with it? <laughs> or is it just like the name? There's a bit, there's a bit in the show called Roll Out the Barrel. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what happens in that. Yeah. Roll out the barrel. Um, oh, we could think of something. There's a barrel of fun, sort of thing. Yeah. And there's, yeah, so there's, and this is a dig for victory, where you've got, like, a big pile of rubble, right? And you're digging through it, scavenging for food, canned food. But if you find, like, relatives or friends, yeah. you score extra points. Oh, that is fantastic. And we, there must Tips. be some sort of fun with, like, gas masks. Yeah. When you can all put them on and dress up as, like, I don't know, one of the banana splits. Yeah. That's um, what could that be, gas? Who snork? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, well, possibly. So, so the, no, every week there's the real snork. Right. So like, it's like, confessions come on. Wait a minute. Do you say if you come across family and friends, you get extra points? Yeah, that's um, what could that be? Back it up a little bit. Yeah. You score extra points. Oh, that would can to dig for victory, where you've got like a big pile of rubble, right? And you're digging through it, scavenging for food, canned food. But if you find like relatives or friends, yeah, you score extra points. Oh, well, who puts relatives and friends underneath the rubble? You know what I mean? That's what I'm not getting. That's how they get there. If it's supposed to be a game. That threw me off. It just took me a second to catch that. Oh, that is fantastic. And we, there must be some sort of fun with, like, gas masks. Yeah. When you can all put them on and dress up as, like, I don't know, one of the banana splits. Yeah. That's um, what could that be? Gas. Who snork? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, possibly. So, so no, every week there's the real snork. Right. So like, it's like, confessions come on. Like, think, you know, <laughs> which one snork? Which one snork? Yeah. So yeah. you've got three, maybe you've got three celebrities. Yeah, it was a gas mask and the real snork. That's so, right. So you've got someone like Ted Maltzson, he pops one on. You've got Frank Bruno, yeah, yeah. and Ginny Cooper. That's and it. they put their mask on and like a little outfit. And then the real snork is there. And you've got to ask them questions. Like, you, you get like Bernie Winters and uh, um, Henry Cooper going, um, um, no, Number three, number three, um, how long have you been in the banana split? And, and Jilly Cooper goes, oh, about six years ago, oh, I don't know, I think the, I don't, the banana split's been going longer than that, no, I don't, I don't think it's number three, um, what, what, what do you think? And, uh, it, Brandy Witters goes, mm, number one, <laughs> number one, um, uh, how did you get the job being in banana splits? And it's probably Ted Maltz I'm going, oh, I am. Um, I want some advert in the paper. That's not right. They were born. You know what I mean? And there's Chaz and Dave in the corner just going, na 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 na
Oh, wait a minute. What? what? Jilly Cooper? I don't know. What does she do? Oh, she's a novelist. She's a novelist. Oh, yeah. Now appearing in Panto. <laughs> huh? I'm not letting you book the guest. <laughs> oh, God. But wait a minute. What? Right. I mean, I love your idea. Yeah. Who, who snork. Yeah. It's a bit odd, isn't it? How we started off with a kind of wartime nostalgia <laughs> yeah. show. Gotcha. But now we've sort of featured oh, sort of quite bad 70s <laughs> animals. Nothing things. wrong with the uh, banana splits. But I like that. That's a good thing. Yeah, okay. That's okay. Ricky's kind of stuck on the banana splits. If I if I remember right, he's mentioned them in several different uh, shows. I remember I remember them from back in the early eighties, but it's been a minute. But is animal <laughs> nothing wrong with the. Uh... Banana splits. But I like that. That's a good thing. Yeah, okay. That can be like a special feature. So I'm it? just going to make a note of it because we've got Dig for Victory, uh, yeah. to be perfectly Anne Frank. Yeah, and, and uh, who's Snork? Who's <laughs> Snork? Yeah. Well, I, I'm full of ideas. I could probably help you on this. Oh, this is great. Well, what other... Yeah. Just, well, let, maybe we'll come up with some other ideas as we Yeah, go we've on. still got Tip the Balance to go. But you know, can I just say, <laughs> I did actually once try and pitch this. When I, You know when I appeared on oh, Blockbusters? God. Yeah. Well, I obviously <laughs> met with a producer there, and I said, i got an idea for you. Have we talked about this on air? We talked about me on Blockbusters. Have we? But not about um, my pitching this No, thing. go on, go on. And uh, I said to her, oh, sit, sit down, I said, uh, I've got a great idea. And I, I tried to bid it with me as the star. <laughs> she said, who are you? Steve, Steve's, Steve's meat rations. Uh, she said, oh, why are you doing this? I said, oh, I am, don't worry, I just, I, I'm the only one who can put it off. Yeah. And, um, she said, right, go on, what, what is it? And at that time, I had none of the games. <laughs> all I had was, all I had was the title, and she went, I like it, yeah, what are the games? I, mm, I don't know. She said, oh, if you'd have just said, well, I'll stop me there, love, and just popped a gas mask on, and <laughs> yeah. said, who am I? She'd have, gone, she'd have gone, snork. <laughs> na, 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 <laughs> na, 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 no, it's not. Na, 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 oh, we got an ad break, then we got a classic from Blur. It's, uh, it's five o'clock. So, if you were going to watch that thing that started at five, two, you'd miss the first five minutes of yeah. it. Yeah. So we're doing well with this um, new game show, aren't we? Yeah, we've got a few ideas Ricky there. Ricky Gervais's Meat Rations. Ricky Gervais's Meat Rations. I love that. It's a great idea, isn't it? We've got, and okay. we, we came up with a, another quick game, because obviously got, so far we've got Dig for Victory, yeah. uh, to be perfectly Anne Frank, and uh, Who's Snoring, right. <laughs> which is possibly, I think, the most popular game so far. Yeah. And also we've come up with a new one, haven't we? Um, Puss in Jack Boots. Yeah. You get a beauty of the age. Say, to come um, out. Saucy with... Samantha Janus? Yeah, maybe she comes out and she's got a little moustache on. Right, and a peak cap pulled low and uh, Nazi regalia. And you go, and you got Bernie Winters and uh, Ted Maltzan and uh, Jilly Cooper going, um, so, um, you're obviously, by the warm, warm applause, you're, you're much loved. Yes, I am. Um... Oh, thank God. Um, What's that here? Uh, show business and the audience clap. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know, you, 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 you're doing the, uh, you're doing the, uh, Nazi accent very well. Um, you were an actress. Yes, that is correct! Yeah, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Could you salute in, please? Yeah. <laughs> that'd be nice. Just do a little Nazi salute. Yeah. You little click. That'd be I lovely. I thought of a little quick one. And what's that one? That's called, um, that's called, um, Puss in Jack Boots. Puss in Jack Boots. Yeah, lovely. I thought of a quick one. It's called, um, Get the Hell Out of Hiroshima. Right? It's oh against, the <laughs> against the clock. It's running against the clock. <laughs> These just get worse and worse. Oh my god. You get the hell out of Hiroshima. <laughs> and it's called, um, Get the Hell Out of Hiroshima. Right? It's against the clock. <laughs> uh, anyway, there's a, uh, that's there as well. <laughs> and, uh, we got any, any other ideas, Gervais? Uh, the Cure, love song. Gervais, it's time for the game show everyone's talking about. Make Gervais laugh. Yeah. We've had a, an entry here this week, all right, and what it is, let me explain the rules. Somebody sent in a picture, Gervais, right, I'm going to show it to you now, and if you laugh, then hopefully this young fellow wins a prize. Uh, it's from Neil in, uh, let me see, Highgate. Oh, no, I'm laughing already, though. Are you? Yeah, because right, I'm well, the anticipation. All right, okay. Straighten yourself out. Now, you've not seen this picture. Oh, it's be just so disappointing if it's not funny. There's nothing worse than that, you know what I mean? I know. Okay. Well, I think, I think you'll laugh. You run the risk. You run the risk. Well, that's, but that's the nature right. of the game. Show. Okay. All right. And what? What? Hey, he's just got a point. Though. There's uh, there's almost nothing worse than something to uh, the build up lets you down. You know what I mean? Because it, it's building up to be something funny, and then it's something that's mediocre. Uh, that can that can ooh, yeah. That can sort of cause a slight depression. All at once. You know what I mean? Just because. Do you get your hopes up or something? You run the risk. Well, that's, but that's the nature of the game show. Okay. Right. All right. And what, 
what's in it for everyone else who can't see the picture or cares? Nothing. Right, nothing. Yeah, that's good. But then, you know, what we're not here for their exactly. amusement, are we? All right, you know, right. we're busy men, we've got things to do. We've yeah. got to entertain ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. what I'd say is, what is there in this show anyway for anybody else? <laughs> Good point. At least we get a laugh. Yeah, okay. Um, now really? what would you say, well, the other thing though, is there a prize for Neil? Yeah, if, if, if I laugh, um... What can you give him? Will you give him sort of like a, a chuckleometer? You know, the other, the Ricky Gervais' chuckleometer. The chuckleometer? Yeah, this is up to ten CDs. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. All right then, well, okay. Because that first one we did, ages yeah. ago, that was, that was up oh, number yeah. ten, wasn't it? Yeah, eight, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Right, here comes the picture. I think it looks to me like it's an internet picture. Okay. I'll with you. You ready? Yeah. Okay, here comes the picture now of Gervais. <laughs> Too late. Too late. Too late. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, has he done that? No. Now, listen, what do we, let's play a record, Gervais, and I will... <laughs> <laughs> you lost fast. Don't explain it. We can explain no, it. We no, we can explain no, it. No, don't, please. Right, no. Um, <laughs> when I was, uh, about 16, um, my nephew got, um, mumps, and all the men in my family were really worried, right? And, uh, I soon found out why. You know, obviously, if you get mumps when you're an adult, and you haven't had it before, you go sterile, or it can cause sterility. Really? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. And, um, I was about 16, and, uh, this worried me, and I went to my mum and I said, have I had mumps? She went, You've had one mump. <laughs> now, I don't know what mumps <laughs> are or is, but I'm pretty sure you can't have a mump. Or, I think she meant that one side of my face <laughs> swelled up. No, I'm going to stop her. Um, it was. But what is a mump? Or what are the mumps? Right. I mean, it's a viral infection, isn't it? I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want her to be right. Like I a don't doctor know, can a number of mumps or one big, <laughs> one <anyone>? big mump. <laughs> what you one big it's like, mump? like a hunchback for a while. It's just like, your, your mump back for a while. <laughs> your mump back. Yeah, and you don't remember, because it's always when you're very right. young. Your mump back, but yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. But I had, apparently I had one mump. Instead of a hunchback. So back. I could probably, probably one of them. It. Just one of them went a bit sterile. Can you, so you, you can become sterile mm. if yeah. you have the mumps when you're an adult? Apparently, yeah. yeah. Can you, I mean, does that, for instance, does that, it doesn't cause, um, say, I mean, say, for instance, an adult had... Uh, I've heard that, you know, that it can cause sterility. It can cause a couple of other health issues, too, if you have it as an adult. Um, if I remember right, it can cause heart issues and, and lung issues. Uh, but anyway. Does that, it doesn't cause, um... Say, I mean, say for instance, an adult had mumps, right, yeah. and then he sort of had sex and he, and, he had, and he gave birth to a child, his wife gave birth to a child. Yeah. That, that can't cause any other problems, it can't cause deformity or anything. <laughs> it's just, no, because it's just my dad had the mumps <laughs> when... I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> we, we should get our facts right, really, if there's a doctor out there. I mean, ca can mumps cause really? how does it do it? I have stories about, um, about my teacher, his mate, um, had to have them, they swelled up and he had to put them in cotton wool for about a month. God almighty. Because that, you can, you know... Mumps aren't fun. No, I mean, well, I'm not saying it. I mean, well, let me, all I can say, maybe, maybe you've had mumps and now you're sterile. That could be a, was that, mumps aren't fun. Yeah. That's like go to work on an egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who said that? I was having an argument with someone about who said, um, go to work on an egg. Someone said it was that William G. Stewart bloke who... No, it was... It uh, was Faye Weldon. No, it wasn't. It was Salmon Rushdie. <laughs> It was. It was. No, it wasn't. No, hang on. No, maybe it wasn't. It was Faye Weldon. It wasn't Faye Weldon. Right. It was either. Right, let me tell you it was. It okay. was either that bloke that wrote, um, A Year in Provence, or whatever it was called. Right. It was, like, it was either 2000. Who came up with the slogan, Go to Work on an Egg? It was either the Year in Provence fella. Who's that? I mean, what his name was. I don't know. 0171 580 2000. Who was the Year in I'm not sure who said that, but I, I, I like the sentiment. Go to work on an egg. In other words... Walk on eggshells. Don't trust the people around you because everybody's out for themselves. You know what I mean? You, you got to keep things close to the chest. Uh, you can be friendly, you can be polite, but as far as giving out personal information, that's just something that somebody can use against you. You know what I mean? Uh, so it, it, it's, I, I like that sentiment. Year in Provence, fella. Who's that? So, I mean, what his name was, I don't know. 0171 580 Who was the Year in Provence, You fella? know that fella who wrote that book, Year in Provence? Everyone yeah. read it, everyone thought it was great. No, his I His name's know. Peter or something, rather. Right, right. Okay. And he, I think he definitely wrote that. 
Got Someone must have come up with something. I think it was a year. See, I, again, I'm thinking that maybe it was the egg thing. But I would say as well that that fellow that wrote Year in Provence, he also came up with the, uh, you know, the Fat Willy cartoon series. What a hilarious series of books they are. Not Fat Willy, is it? It's called Fat Willy, wasn't it? What's the one, Where's Willy? <laughs> where's Wally? Where's Wally? Where's Willy? That'd be pretty <laughs> straightforward every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a fellow there. No, there it's not where you come from, it wouldn't. Oh, well, there you go. Well, um, Peter Mayle is the name of the bloke who wrote um, Year in Provence. Um, thanks to uh, Neil. Uh, and also, Neil says that Salmon Rushdie did Naughty But Nice for the cake commercial. Now, I, I still don't know who did uh, Go To Work On An Egg. I think it was Faye Weldon. No, it was Peter Mayle. Do you reckon it yes, was? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm and, gutted. Yeah. And you very rarely, Jerry from Ballum, you very rarely go uh, sterile for months. Uh, but it is a viral uh, infection, yeah. It's such an informative show. This programme, <laughs> exactly, yeah, Steve. It, yeah. it's, it's like a public service. It really is, isn't it? Mm. And we it says very rarely, but it doesn't say never. You know what I mean? So it, it's, I believe it's a rare possibility, but uh, I remember right. It's one of the, it's one of the effects that can be had from mumps. But uh, anyway, somebody let me know if I'm if I'm way off because I I can't remember shit anymore. So <laughs> basically. We, we treat things sort of sensibly and maturely and we, we... It's like a public service. It really is, isn't it? Mm. And we, we treat things sort of sensibly and maturely and we, we give out, um, you know, right. the correct information. I'll be honest with it. It's safe yeah, for kids yeah. to listen to, isn't it? Well, imagine if you were in the... I mean, this happens to us all the time. You know, you're in the pub and someone will say, well, you know, is mumps a problem? Is it going to cause infertility? And you're there just saying, um... Well, I was listening to Ricky Gervais. And? It's very rare. It is a viral infection. Exactly. And do you, uh, do you know who did uh, go to work on an egg? They went, no. Peter Mayer or um, Faye Weldon, we're not sure. Possibly <laughs> Salman Rushdie. It, no, it definitely wasn't Salman Rushdie. That's quite incredible, though, to go from writing naughty but nice about cakes to having to, to live to in a hole in for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, I used to write when I was at school. Oh, yeah. Um, now, I didn't watch sort of kids' programmes when I was growing up. I watched sort of crap adult ones. You know, I mean, ITV on the telly from... Uh, 12 midday through to like midnight right. and i'd watch all the um all the police series mm. um police story uh charlie's angels steve austin and tj hooker was one with william shatner police story uh charlie's angels steve austin and teen the, night rider teen night rider yeah <laughs> and um i start I, I wrote this essay at school and i just couldn't stop and i started serializing it and every time i just kept writing i was sort of like you know people were reading it at school and it was about a cop a new york cop who was as hard as you know what i mean yeah and i worked out what his name was now it's i just i uh, God, this is how television influences me. Because it was one word name, which is his surname. That was the title of the uh, book, title of the series, and that's what all his friends called him. White to you, right. <clears throat> it was called Jezuk. <laughs> Jezuk? Okay. Yeah. Jezuk. Yeah, I thought it had a Z and a K and a J. Jezuk. Jezuk. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know it does sound so close to, like, Pillock or Jesse. Yeah. Or Nonce. No, no Nonce. There's no Nonce. Well, do you know what I mean? Cross between sort of Jezuk. like Pillock and Jism. Damn you, Jezuk! Yeah, <laughs> you're off the case. <laughs> Give me the badge. <laughs> Keep the stinking badge. I don't need a badge to be a cop. It was all stuff like that. And he yeah. first, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he'd look at his gun and go, "This is my law." Oh my God, it's Jezuk! How did he find us? <laughs> Jezuk! <laughs> yeah, it was great. There'd be shootouts and everything. Oh, yeah. fantastic! Let me just ask: Was he? Um, was he? Did he have perhaps a broken marriage? He was hard. It, it, it's a way to. Build your imagination, you know. Uh, you take a small concept and you build on it, and you build on it, and you build on it. That's how that's how stories are written. That's how books are written. Uh, it's a small concept, and then you build on it, build on. Uh, so, but it's also a way to build your imagination up. To where, uh, it reaches farther. You can ima you can imagine more. Uh, I don't, I'm I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. Uh, it uh, it makes it it broadens your mind. Words. That's what I'm trying to say. But um, 
I, I liked it. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Let me just ask, like the was he, the um, was he, he did he have perhaps have a broken marriage? He was hard-boiled. He played by his own rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Uh, simultaneous with this. He was a bit of a drunkard as well, had a yeah. bit of drink. No, he didn't, didn't drink, oh, no. Good. He was a good-looking fella. Um, but he was letting himself go, he was a bit hard-bitten. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing I was sort of simultaneous, which was more of a novel. I wasn't serious, I was actually writing a novel and I got like three exercise books, right? Um, it was about this kid, right? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> right? He saw his um, parents just brutally murdered for no reason by a gang of outlaws, yeah? And he buried his father, and he knelt down on the grave, and he said, looked up, and he goes, as God is my witness, I will avenge thee. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sort of oh, went really? to the the store and he got loads of bullets and he practiced and he was the fastest guy he was only about 16. yeah uh, his name was jody barnes <laughs> <laughs> jody barnes is all right yeah yeah good Imagine, that's nice yeah oh <laughs> fantastic have you still got any of those exercise books <laughs> I oh, have not. That would be the incredible. teachers used to sort of like i must have gone yeah it's good i must have passed around the uh he's still another one jimmy's has written another episode of jezuk yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I say, seriously, if you brought one of those in and yeah. read it out, that'd be weird. I'd be entranced. <laughs> Imagine it. Seriously, that'd be great. Can you, do you think the your ramblings might... of a twisted 14-year-old brain that only ever watched ITV cop shows. Do you think your uh, mum yeah. might still have some copies of, no, of Jezuk? Got... No. <laughs> was, it, was, it like, was it like sort of, the initial one was like Jezuk, then it was like Jezuk abroad, <laughs> Jezuk in Paris, <laughs> um, yeah. Jezuk on safari. Yeah. Here well, comes Jezuk. My moment. Return of Jezuk. I liked that Jezuk. He's a proper man. Yeah. He's not like you. But mum, I invented Jezuk. You were, you were a Nazi. <laughs> you, you couldn't be like Jezuk. He's, he's in my mind. Return of Jezuk. Here yeah. comes Jezuk. Son of Jezuk. Oh, it's fantastic. What if Jezuk met Jodie Barnes? They'd get on. They'd have no quarrels. They could team up. Oh, it'd be fantastic. After break, a little bit of uh, Lars. Teen Jezuk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Still here then. <laughs> Gervais, um, you've embarrassed yourself. Mm. Oh, just shut your ugly gob, you bug-eyed, anemic, fish-faced tosser. <laughs> nice to have you back. Five past four on a Sunday, Ricky Gervais, XFM 104.9, London's, uh, only alternative. <laughs> Steve. Yeah. You know we gave away those CDs. Hey, we could, great giveaways. Just good radio, isn't it? We've got CDs to give away. Tickets, that's good radio. Mm. Do, do you remember who won them? What, last week? Yeah. Well, no. Right. I've got to get them back. Oh, no. What, are these the CDs that we took, we took from the library? Yeah. I've got to get them back. 0171-580-2000. If you want... <laughs> you took them from the library. <laughs> Oh, God. This is... Uh, there's something else this week, you know. Uh, it, it's between the storytelling and the game show, the imaginary game show. Uh, it's just something else. I've got to get him back. 0171 580 2000. If you won those CDs, could you give us a call? <laughs> well, why should they bother? They're probably busy listening to them. You... Do you know what I mean? You can't give something away and then take it back. Yeah, I need big time. I've got to get them back. We've had a uh, bill for the computer as well. That's mine. No, it's not yours. It is it's mine. It's not yours. I procured that. That is uh, that is mine now. No, the... that is technically that technically counts as ownership. Listen, Gervais, it's not yours. All right, I've told you this before. I've explained this to you a hundred times. What? All right. If you if you urinate on something, yeah, it is not yours. It does. No, it's not. That's what yours. cats do. That is what cats do. They go around. They, they. This sounds like part of what was in the last one. I I remember hearing this part. Is the last one or the one before that? We were talking about the computer. It is not yours. It does, in no, the cat mode. That's what yours. cats do. That is what cats do. They go around the they, territory, that's theirs, they, they urinate on it. That computer's mine. If a cat urinates on something, yeah. right, yeah, in its cat philosophy, yeah. it owns that. I agree, it's, that's a sort of, uh, well, what do you call it, a sort of territory thing. What's the difference? You're not a cat. No, I know. You're not right. a cat. That's discrimination. No, you're not a cat. You can't, you can't live life by cat rules. Well, I've got loads of stuff like that. <laughs> discrimination. My flat's full of stuff that I've got like that. <laughs> yeah, I've got, uh... Two telephone boxes. Right. Um, I've got a cash point machine. Yeah. 
Yeah. Glim was furious. He was getting oh, out money. Okay. Right. Um, didn't depend. Uh, side of a church. That's yours. Yeah. Um, two BMWs. Well, I had two. I've got one now. What happened? The, yeah. the, the, the second one, the owner caught me and he started doing the same. And because I started first, I finished first, so he finished last, so it was technically his again. Is that how it works? Yeah. If I piss on something, then that's mine. Yeah. But if someone else pisses on it, then that's theirs. Yeah. I did hear this one before. It was special. I, I remember him talking about peeing on the side of a church. Uh, <laughs> or owning the side of a church, you know. Uh, and the owner getting mad about the BMW. So I remember that part. So we did hear this part. Like, so. Piss on something, then that's mine. Yeah. If someone else pisses on it, then they're serious. I yeah. said these are so jumbled a little bit. Could you say urinate? This is XFM 104.9. Yeah. They are mine They're now. not yours. They are they're not. Uh, they're my shoes, Jimmy. Yeah, and they're mine now. <laughs> no, they're not. I can't believe. I, this is why I don't want to do this anymore. Why? Just, I can't believe you. They're my shoes now. That is how, that is ownership. That counts. In the cat world. It, they're my shoes now. And some of the carpet is mine as well. In the cat world. Yeah. Right. Wow. You cannot live your life by the rules of the cat world. I can. I can. How, what does, what does your girlfriend what, Watch do? this. Oh. Not many people can oh, do that. XFM, I thought we're not on I don't want to know. How do these sort of little theories of yours develop? What? They come in my head. Then they're all right. Then I like them and they happen. <laughs> right. Then they're mine. <laughs> so, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What do other people make of the They thing? go along with it. What, your girlfriend? Yeah. And all, and all my special friends and the friends that I make. Does she mind that, that your flat looks like an East End lockup and stinks of urine? No. She don't have a problem with that? No. The sinuses are gone now. Completely gone. The sinuses yeah. are gone? <laughs> yeah. The Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought as much. Well, I know what you rock and rollers get up to, Gervais, in your, in your spare time. <laughs> Oh dear. It's beautiful to see you again though, because yeah. we, thought, we thought you would, uh... I'm looking good. We thought you'd be gone forever. Why? But you're back. Yeah. It's no. beautiful to see you. Oh, I'll be around for Any, anything planned? I, did, I didn't expect, it's not my life, I didn't expect to be here this long, so anything is a bonus. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, any, uh, any plans for today's show? Uh, got some more records than that, and some um, absolute drivel. Right. Yeah. So, packed so, into so, two hours. So no different. No. No, 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 <laughs> hey. no, no. Great, well it's going well. It's yeah. Going well. I've got a little competition. Yeah. Um, which I'll maybe introduce after the... Is this, is there anyone mad enough to sleep with me competition? Cause <laughs> it did, no, is there? Is it? I'm not doing that one again. Alright, I've got a different yeah. one. Yeah. Um, I've got a different competition. Keep calling the Samaritans, please, so we don't do that sort of thing, sir. Please. Or else. <laughs> Can't threaten the Samaritans. Why do you like that song so much? Because, th what? Because they're singing about you being an ugly tosser, alright? <laughs> Just gone 20 past four. Gervais, I hate to kick people when they're down. <laughs> okay, so we went from 25 past 4 to 5 o'clock, now it's 20 past 4. So yeah, they're jumbled just a bit. Um, like I said, I think we heard that last bit on the last one, or the one before that. Uh, like I swore, especially when he started talking about owning the church, the side of the church. No, you don't, you like it, and you, you like I hate to kick people when they're down. <laughs> No, you don't. You like it. And you you like people twitching when they've been badly hurt. <laughs> but I, for some, I don't know how this came about, but I started to uh, consider the songs of Carter, the oh, Unstoppable Sex Machine. I don't know why. Someone was playing one in Carter. my house, and we were flipping through the um, the record, the, the lyric sheets. Fruit bat. Now, I don't know. When I was, at, uh, when I was, when I was in the sixth form, everybody, every, when I was in the sixth form, Gervais, everybody had a, a Carter USM t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, you know. uh, and uh, I imagine you probably. By the end of the eighties, early nineties, so all um, events officers, A and R men. Yeah. What, what were right. you doing about that time? You were, you'd have been what? That was when you were claiming benefit. Yeah. While still working. Yeah. Yeah. You had the wheelchair and everything. Yeah, the tartan blanket. Nice. Fantastic. Um, and uh, I, because I see everybody had a Carter USM T-shirt. I didn't have one because I didn't. No. Do you know what I mean? That wasn't me. I, they all was all a bit cliquey, and they didn't like me for it. Yeah, it wasn't because of that, though, was it? It was because they sort of had like symmetrical heads. <laughs> they, sort of, they were they were running in. There. <laughs> it's because they had symmetrical heads. <laughs> Here he goes again. Uh, I've noticed that uh, a lot of the banner between these two is what gets directed towards Carl later on. Uh, they kind of quit 
taking jabs at each other and just started taking jabs at Carl himself. Uh, they don't quit taking jabs at each other. They just slow down on it a lot. But uh, I noticed that. It's because they sort of had like symmetrical heads. Uh, they, sort of, they, were, they were running in their human packs. Weren't they? Those and just ostracizing you, going, oh dear. Those start, yeah. right? I'm just looking through the lyric sheet. This is from the album, uh, 1992, the Love Album, right, by Carter. Yeah. Come uh, just, on. just give you a taste of some of the lyrics. Yeah, go on. Which we thought were so profound in 1990 or whatever. I never did. Um, this is from the track Look Mum, No Hands. <laughs> <laughs> I should point out that many of the, the titles of their songs are appalling. Um, there's obviously, my, my favourite, possibly the worst, is The Road to Domestos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is the that, worst name for oh, song I've ever heard. I mean, oh, what's that supposed to mean? Anyway, check so, so this lyric out. This is one of the, the go on, lyrics. Go on, I'm ready. <laughs> go on. He flies through the air with the greatest of ease, that daring young man in the blue dungarees. <laughs> God. What the hell is that mean? <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Oh, she flies like a bird in the sky eye, that ugly old tart with a sty in her eye. This is, uh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is quite a nice one. Um, this, is, this is clever. This is bloody clever. Go on, what they do? What's Fruit Bat done here? Go if on. we club together yeah. with all the diamonds hey, we Hold say. on, I'll stop you there. Club? <laughs> go on. Diamond? That, that's hey. so far. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, oh, come on. How's it, go on. <laughs> if we club together with all the diamonds we've saved, yeah. we could look to our hearts and say, Hold on, hearts is a, is a, is a suit in the... It's incredible. Oh, go on. Clubs, diamonds, hearts. We could look to all our hearts and say, we've got it in spades. What does that mean? Spades. Okay. Hold on. What's that, what's that, what does that sentence mean? If we club together with all the diamonds we've saved, yeah. we could look to our hearts and say, we've got it in spades. I don't know what that means. I have no idea, but that's the kind of brilliant. So they see what they did there? They got all those... <laughs> it's incredible. Um, no there's a good great one here. Can they do it with signs of the zodiac? Uh, Parts of the body. Here we are. Here we are. Um, I've been GBH'd and, and ABH'd <laughs> for a packet of B and H. I've been taken and I've been driven away. Oh, um, oh. My telephone is always ringing and my number is triple X directory. Oh. Uh, call 0898 treble three. Talk dirty to me. That is some of the worst lyrics, Gervais, surely oh. that you've ever heard. Unless you knew different. 0171 580 2000. I've been thinking some of my own as well. The worst lyrics you've ever come across. Oh, there's going to be arguments. Yeah. 0171 580 2000. Or you can fax us 0171 580. I don't see very many arguments to that. That's, that's, uh, I would have to hear it in the song itself, you know what I mean? Just to hear it not out of context, if that makes sense. Because uh, just reading out lyrics is a whole lot different than actually hearing them sung. Uh, <laughs> trust me. So one two three four and, and one seven one five eight oh two thousand, or you can fax us oh one seven one five eight oh one two three four. And 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 think realistically, because I, I hate it when you see in like the Melody Maker Enemy and they ask one of these pop stars, "What's the worst song of all time?" and they go, "The Birdie song." Or no, it's not. It's something like Carter or Swade or David Bowie, because they they're, they're in that framework. They're the potentially. You know, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Don't go for um, chirpy chirpy cheap cheap. Go for something like that, because that is disgusting. Let me just tell you, this is my go final on. one um, before we go away, uh, which is, um, uh, yes, sorry, boy, there's nothing worth living for, but it really ain't worth dying for, so just say three hail Jesus and Mary chains. <laughs> <laughs> Early in the morning, okay. have a breakfast at your table. Make sure that your coffee has a sugar and cream. <laughs> your eggs are over easy. It's sort of like a breakfast song. I can't remember, does it? <laughs> Because I'm not your superwoman, doom, 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 doom. Yeah. It's just, I've and never then, heard this. There's one great bit as well. Um, he goes, uh, um, uh, kind of now you say your juice is sour. It used to be so sweet. <laughs> and I can't help but uh, wondering if you're talking about me. Isn't that great? Oh, uh, sorry, look, this, this, um, juice is, it's a bit sour. It used to be so sweet. Oh, okay. Oh, fine, I'll change it. No, no. No, let me explain. This juice, yeah, it's sour. It used to be sweet. Well, it's thought we've always had. No, 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 you're not listening. 
you're not listening. I think you're an ugly pig. I want to leave you. <laughs> so I mean, that, you know, he, he didn't state it. <laughs> Your eggs are over easy. Oh, who's that by? No, I didn't ever heard it. You've made it up. I'm not your superwoman. Do do. Oh, one seven one five eight oh two. Th I just thought of another one as well. So do you remember John White? I ain't missing you at all. Missing you since you've been gone away. And he's worried about people that think that he's really not missing her. So, uh, <laughs> towards the end, he goes, I can lie to myself. Oh, he was lying all along then, wasn't oh. he? Oh, got any more carter lyrics? Well, I'm still wading through them, Gervais, and it's just making me quite low. So, uh, I'll try and dig out a few more for the the next time we have a chat. Um, but uh, I would say that Emma, of course, who uh, helps us out here, she's uh, mentioned... Um, just trying to think. That was Rod Stewart, wasn't it? Was saying that. Missing you. Oh. Damn. I swear that was Rod Stewart. Back in the 80s. Um, but uh, I would say that Emma, of course, who uh, helps us out here, she's uh, mentioned, um, track. What, what was it, Emma? What was yours? It was... Uh, YMCA. YMCA. Um, I've, got, I've got a worse one. Have you? Um, oh, hold on. Oh, what's that one? Another one? That's worse. Oh. Oh, God, yeah. Well, Emma, we we'll, yeah, we'll save that one. Um, Emma's was, um, you can get yourself clean, you can have a good meal. You can get yourself clean, you have a good meal. Well, I don't have a problem with it, you see, because I just think it's a wonderful thing. You know, the, the YMCA yeah. doesn't get enough publicity, good press, yeah. and the village people did them a favour. I mean, why on earth they wrote right. that song? Well, you what, know, to, are to you serious? publicise the YMCA. I mean, who thinks, hmm, I don't know, uh, <laughs> oh, people have done the police force, you know, they've done... Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, this is very good YMCA. to disagree, yeah. but I think you mean this, so you don't know what that song is, you, you think that they're actually some sort of advertising for the YMCA, were you? Well, I don't know, it just seems really odd to me. Well, if I is remember it, like, at the time, the YMCA, the YMCA complained at the time because the connotations. Yeah. What kind of, it's just a PR thing for the YMCA, I imagine. It's like that one that's in, 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 in the name. This was in the last one, too, because they said that, uh, the way they were dressed up, uh, they came off as homosexual. That's why the YMCA didn't want anything to do with the song. It was a big controversy about that. What kind of, it's just a PR thing for the YMCA, I imagine. It's like that one that in the in the no, navy, no, no, no. in the navy, yeah. you know, the, the sort of PR thing for the for the navy. It's yeah. just bizarre. When they would when they were dressed up as sailors and stuff. Yeah, well, whatever. Where, whereas usually they sort of like construction worker with a nice moustache, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Traffic cop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jumpers. And, uh... What? I don't... I just... I'm worried about the red Indian you see? Am I supposed to be... I know where that has been Am I supposed to be reading between the lines or something? <coughs> I, well, I, I don't understand. I mean, I don't really understand. I mean this seriously. Okay, I don't right. understand what you're talking okay, about. Okay, this, this is fine. Well, uh, obviously, there were gay connotations. It's a, like a, a, a gay icon record, isn't it? YMCA. In the Navy. That was the point of it. What did you need? One of them dressed as Judy Garland. What? What? I don't understand. What was your problem with that? What? What? But there's no. I don't understand why that suggests Sorry. that people are gay. I don't. It doesn't necessarily. It's it like it's high camp, isn't it? It's been but adopted since as well. But the four of them. There's there's a there's a guy dressed as a motorcycle cop. There's yeah. no reason why that he should be gay. There's no there's way, a, there's a, why anyone should be gay. There's it's a builder. Chosen, what, there's what? a builder. Yeah. Right. Um. So no builders are gay ever. There's, another, there's gay another one. I can't. What the other one is? Right. And then there's a Red Indian. Why on earth the Red Indian <laughs> well, is supposed that, to be an icon? I don't know about that. I'm, 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 I'm flummoxed on that one, I'll be honest. But it's what I'm saying. Because they, they were supposed to have a representative from each race together. Because they had, they, had, uh, they had the black guy, they had the Indian, they had the... Uh, the one guy who looked extremely Italian. Um, they had the construction worker they were ha they were trying to bring everybody together if that makes sense you know what i mean by including everyone it, it, it was one of the earlier songs to do it it's supposed to be an icon. I don't know about that. I'm, I'm, no I, I, I'm flummoxed on that one. I'll be honest. But it's what I'm saying to you, Gervais, is if you're going to use you, if you can talk about gay people, then then why don't they use the cliches? Why isn't there a uh, hairdresser? Right. Okay. And because it's probably the sort of cliches that even seen gays want to get away from. Also, that's the confusing camp. ITV gays with with real homosexual people who live normal lives. If I'm going right. to write a song about gay people, I'm going to have a hairdresser. <laughs> yeah, you are. In order to all you I'm are. Is, in order to appeal to a gay community, I'd have a hairdresser, Johnny Munn. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Larry Grayson. <laughs> Obviously. And, uh, I don't know, um... Well, you, well, well, pe well you wouldn't no, have sure Jason Donovan, is. then, obviously. Because <laughs> he's not. So you wouldn't have him, would you? No, I wouldn't have Jason Donovan. No. Well, I wouldn't have Philip Schofield. Well, I, no, I, wouldn't even have Andy, I wouldn't have Andy Peters. Right. I wouldn't have Andy Peters. Okay, I'm getting I scared. Would, if Shut I, up! I would I'm, not have Andy I'm Peters. I'm getting scared! I would not Shut have Andy up! Peters! A few more, um, Carter lyrics for you. Go on. Do enjoy this one. Um, it's just one big knees up, a night on the town, a storm in a teacup, more like a teacup in a storm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, man? Yeah. It's more like a teacup in a storm. Yeah, they've twisted it, All haven't right. they? Alright. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, Ian Canfield, you know, he's 12 now. Right. He does the rock show. Oh, yeah. Um, he called and, uh, that, I'm not your superwoman. It was, um, Karen White. And Never. he also says, a worse lyric in uh, YMCA is, young man, there's no need to feel down. <laughs> Fair uh, enough. Uh, another Carter lyric for you. The tequila sun is rising. And uh, the listen to me. The tequila sun is rising and the Harvey's Bristol moon is shining. Because <laughs> they've got Harvey's, ha you know, shine on Harvey's moon. Yeah. And somehow... Harvey's Bristol moon is shining. Okay. I have no idea. It's got to be something about pulling your trousers down in a coach. It's just isn't it? rubbish. And so, also, um, you, know, you know, um, Quick Space, I played that and I, <laughs> you said, oh, why is that your favourite? Mm. And I got annoyed because you've got no taste and shouldn't even question me. And I said it was about you being an ugly tosser. Well, Nina, from the band, oh, right. who's round at Jan's, said, no, it's not about him being ugly. Um, and the worst lyric is from the Beatles. You should see her in drag in a polythene bag. What's that from, then? I don't know, polythene perm or whatever it's called. Could be. Yeah. Could well be. All right, then the worst Beatles lyrics. We'll have those as well. There's okay. a lot of them to choose from. There are a lot. Good. No, I'm not dissing the Beatles. No. I'm just saying they wrote, so, you know, they can't keep up that level, can they? Gervais, I've heard the songs you've written. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand me? Yeah. You're, not dis you're not in a position to disrespect anybody. <laughs> no, okay. I don't. I'm talking about people. I didn't realize Ricky wrote songs. Yeah. You're, not dis you're not in a position to disrespect anybody. Oh, no. I don't. I'm, I'm talking about people on the tube, <laughs> all right, that can barely speak, <laughs> all right, that just uh, with like a kazoo. There's a guy <laughs> near my yeah. tube, just, so he just got a kazoo, right, ding, and just taps his foot, yeah. right, ding, and then tries to sell lighters to you by being yeah. a kazoo. Right? You can't even disrespect him yeah. for his musical ability. Of course, you, you're yeah. laughing about him now. If that was female, it'd be a whole different story, wouldn't it? Well, you know, you've got to take it where you can get You'd it. You'd have a lot of lighters every day, <laughs> wouldn't hey. you? You'd be struggling <laughs> down that road. I'd with say, loads of little, like little clippers. I'd say, you know, yeah. I think there's a, there's a sad lack of kazoos on the wireless, and I'd have her in here for a He's quick got session. a point. He's got a point. If it was, if it was a woman there, uh, you should get more sympathy towards it than if it was a man there doing the same thing. Uh, if it was a man there doing the same thing, I just think it was crazy. Uh, of course, these days, it, it could be a woman, they think it was crazy, she was crazy, you know what I mean? Uh, and these days, you'd probably be right. Uh, <laughs> anyway. There's a sad lack of kazoos on the wireless, and I'd have her in here for a quick session. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we better do a competition now. Okay, yeah, well, we've got these two, is it two pairs of pulp tickets? Or so just, you, just no idea, have you? I've no idea. You just want to, we've got them, and, and, and. oh, can I do this bit? You don't know what you're doing, do you? It's never stopped me, I no. Well, exactly. I, I wasn't going to mention it. No. All right, you do it. Go on then. I'll sit over here. I'm out the way. Okay. How many tickets have we got, Emma? Uh, one pair. One pair. That's two to you, Steve. To give away. That's two to you, Steve. Pulse. That's two to you, Steve. That's fucked up. That's two to you, Steve. To give away. who? Pulp. When? Next Saturday. Where? Finsbury Park. At what time? About nine. And what have people got to do to win the tickets? Uh. Yeah, now you're stumped. <laughs> what? <laughs> you suggest I should plan this show? Yes. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. Why? Hmm. All right, now listen, I think we should just give people an added reason to phone in with their worst lyrics ever. Yeah. They can win um, this pair of pulp tickets. Yeah. And then if we get bored with that in, say, about ten minutes' time, we'll come up with uh, with another if, reason. If it would take ten minutes for us to get bored. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll, I'll be surprised if we actually bother. Yeah. Yeah? 
Yeah. Got an ad break, and then uh, I've got a, at least I've got a pulp song lined up. Before you do that, oh, we should tell them what the competition is, shouldn't we? I just did. What was it? I wasn't listening. <laughs> I, w I really, I wasn't listening. I really do turn off when you talk. Emma, what was what was the competition? I'm, I'm not sure if I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone to find out who Nobody was listening to it. <laughs> yeah. What was the competition? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that was the end of it. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait to get to Series 1 and see uh, how they introduce Carl into the mix. But uh, this is, so far, this is this has been fun. This is Bound to get better with Carl in the mix, though. Anyway, uh, Carl Pilkins, it's horror, it's horror stories. I was going to check that out, but I think that's part of the XFM series as well. Uh, little excerpts from it, so I will hold off on that until I know for sure. Uh, somebody want to let me know if that is part of the XFM series. And if not, then I'll try to check it out. Um, uh, Anyway, uh, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this one in the comments. Let me know what else I need to check out, and I will get there as soon as I can. If you're still here and you haven't done so yet, I'd like to ask you to hit that subscribe button. It goes a long way towards supporting the channel, and it, it shows up my analytics, lets me know I'm on the right track with these videos. Uh, and it's greatly appreciated, too. That being said, that is just about going to wrap up this video. It's been a long one. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this with me and I hope to see you on the next video. I love you guys. Peace. Hey guys, make sure to check out one of my other videos right here. Jerry J.